Um, so let's go ahead and move on to activities and venues. And so speaking of the app, continuing talking about the app, uh, you would use the Carnival Hub app to see what's going on throughout the day. So the day planner is actually there on the app. You don't have the paper ones anymore, no but it gives. Fun. Yeah, but it gives. <laughs> it's great because it gives you a schedule of what's going on. You can heart things that you want to attend, and then you can get reminders that it's coming up that day or that evening or whatever. You can add actual. I think other people from your party. Uh, are, are the rooms and stuff like that so people can get notifications that way too, yeah. the, the, the app is great because it also has like chat on there and wi-fi and uh the menus you can actually see the menus and and food and see what's available there um but it's but let me say this for people y'all know i'm not like i'm not one for dragging my phone well yeah okay that is yes so that's, that's true. The, I, as much as i love the app that's the only caveat i would say yes that, now I got my cell phone, which mine is the size of a brick. Then right. I have to keep up with. Now, that's so true. If that's not your thing, my understanding is you can get a copy of the Fun Times, a paper version. Okay. Um, if you go to a restaurant and they have, you know, scan the barcode, they can get you paper versions. So you don't have to have your phone. But I'm be honest with you, you're gonna prefer and wish you had it. It's just easier to just have that and be able to pull up stuff and do the things that you need. So yeah, so one of the great things about Carnival Mardi Gras, tons and tons of venues and tons and tons of activities to do. There is so much seating and lounges. If you just wanna sit and people watch, if you just wanna listen to live music, listen to the sounds of whatever it is that's going on, love 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 the fact that they have so many open areas to actually do that i think we we did that with the brass magnolia there were certain places in grand central that we just sat around out by the pool area uh i love the limelight lounge i thought it was really really nice uh and just just lots of people watching stuff right do, I, I feel like carnival's always been pretty good with having seen them like back in the day when they had like promenades um, yeah now they weren't two and three story promenades like royal no, but they no. have um just regular promenades i remember my mom and i and this is like back in 2000 we would go and sit and people watch especially on formal night i was gonna say that's probably the best time yeah, to do and it just watch people you know <laughs> walking by getting pictures and taking so carnival's yeah. always been that way mm -hmm. and so again kind of how we talked about earlier with like how ncl does it particularly with Epic, yeah. they're very good at having enough venues that are spread out enough that I felt like I didn't run into too many issues where I felt like there were a lot Crowds. of people. Yeah. Now they do it better, I feel like, than NCL because NCL has a whole bunch of venues, but they're really small. Mm -hmm. And so it feels like we're just all in little bitty compartments, but all still in the same space. Yeah. Like the main thing of Epic, the main like where everything is, it's just too much. It just feels too crowded. But I think Carnival does a better job of spreading it out amongst floors to the back, to the front of the center of the ship. And even side to side, like it's very open and wide. You go right down the hall to where the, um, the uh, fortune teller bar was. They had people down there playing jazz or uh, music down there. You had the Brass Magnolia people playing music and stuff like that. Uh, we sat in the casino. We actually played in the casino a little bit. Uh, there was a woman that was in there that won $2,000, I think, on a slot machine right beside us. Uh, a couple slot machines down from us. We didn't really win anything, but we're not really big gamblers anyways. But we did help fund her $2,000. <laughs> <laughs> we're giving <Yes>, people. <laughs> we did do that. Um, I, I do also want to talk about the entertainment on this cruise ship. Uh, we saw two shows in the uh, Grand Central Theater. Uh, one was the Big Top something. We'll just call it the Big Top. Uh, but it was a group that was singing uh, music from The Greatest Showman. I love The Greatest Showman. It's probably one of the best musicals out there. This woman that was up there sounded fantastic. She was singing Never Enough, uh, I, uh, This Is Me, uh, all the songs from, from The Greatest Showman. And they did an amazing, amazing job. Uh, and then we also saw the Celestial, Celestial strings. strings, right? Yeah, they were really, really good too. Singing some popular songs. Yeah, so Celestial played the violin. Strings was uh, the one that I saw because I didn't go to the big top, but yeah. it was interesting. So one of the things I I, I mentioned, and maybe I I talked slightly about this in um, 
the ship the deck tour but so the grand atrium is kind of a secondary theater to oh, yeah. like the typical main theater that you find on a cruise ship mm -hmm. and it's in grand central um so kind of basically the middle of the cruise ship and it has seating and it has t like three tiers of seating and so while the venue itself is is neat and interesting and it draws crowds and again it's a good way to separate and not have everybody in the theater and having to you know have 15 different shows because you got 6,000 people up there right um it offers a, a secondary location but it doesn't quite work because the performers like to use not only the stage but the floor level mm -hmm. and because there is really not the the upstairs seating isn't pushed as far back as it could be so what you have is like in a regular theater, balcony seating is far enough back that if you're in the balcony, you can still see the stage and the, and the floor. floor. But imagine here you've got your balcony seats and they're that not that much further out than the stage. Yeah. So when they're down here on the floor doing stuff, you absolutely cannot even see it yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. So anything off the stage, if you're sitting in any of those um, seats, the balcony seats and you're not in that front row you're not going to be able to see half of what they're doing that's a good point um, yeah. and it was funny because in this one they actually had a, uh, a rope come from the ceiling and the yep. woman was dancing on it and we saw the top of her head yep, you yeah know? only when they went and lifted her all the way up did right. we actually did we even see know she her was there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly so just be careful about where you sit in that area it's very pretty uh, and the entertainment there is very good, so you might want to make sure you get a really good seat in order to see it all. Yeah. And I noticed in the Grand Central Theater, um, it's it's on it's in the middle of the ship, and one side of it is supposed to be these giant screens, right? Oh yes. And they utilize it for their performances, but there's they would open up the screen so that you can actually see out the windows and see the ocean going by. Well, that was only open two times maybe three times throughout the entire cruise the first day that you get on board uh but they're not utilizing it, it's just open and then they close it right before you know nighttime comes they had it open during bingo okay and then they had it open on the last day but when you get off the ship that's it i would have loved to have sat there throughout the day you know and just watch the ocean go by and feel like i'm outside but i'm not really because that area is very nice lounge area there's a bar there like the uh, Java Blue Cafe is right right there also. They have a nice little cup of coffee, whatever, and just watch the ocean go back to those giant, you know, windows. Yeah. I, think, I, I was disappointed that they didn't have that open. And I think I've heard other people mention it too. It's kind of like you get up there and you're like, oh, this is so beautiful. And yeah. And it is. And then for the rest of the cruise, you never see it again because, you know, they're busy sitting up shows, practicing for shows, doing yeah. things like that. So they, you know, pull the covering down or the screens or right. whatever and so you don't see the, the that was a little bit disappointing anymore, to me I, so like, I, I was yeah. disappointed in that uh but it doesn't take away the fact that the entertainment that was there was actually really good uh they had a they even had a mardi gras uh parade there <laughs> which was kind of interesting yeah okay i have to say the mardi gras parade now mind you we were in some of the suckier seats so maybe the people in the front saw something we right did. but the mardi gras parade was not what i thought of. it almost was like grab some people out the audience and and walk them around the shop that's true it was weird yeah. it wasn't what i thought it was gonna be it was still um, kind of fun so though, here's I thought. The thing. it may be more fun depending on the guests who the guests who are on your cruise, cruise. right yeah you know, if you got a lot of people who are dressed up there to have a party i'm sure yeah you're gonna have a great time because there were people stuff. dressed up in mardi gras yes. gear and beads and stuff like that so, so i they, think they were into it like Again, I, I hate to compare it, but I have to. If we were, if this was a parade on Royal Caribbean for Mardi Gras, it would have been totally different. Oh, well, that's so true. So if you're used to that, this, this <laughs> is not exactly the same. What was the um, Madagascar parade? Yeah, like Madagascar, yeah. and they had all the, they had know, the balloons and everything. And balloons, yeah. Balloon drops. No, yeah. this is not what this is. <laughs> So it was, it was, it was little, so interesting. Yeah, it, it was kind of weird, though, because they nominated these two people as, I guess, the king, king and queen. King queen, yeah. I don't know who those people were. Yeah, I, I don't know they where they came dead. from. Yeah. It was so weird. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. Um, but then we also checked out the piano bar. We had never been to the piano bar before. Piano Keys 88, I think is what it was called. Fantastic. He was amazing. I mean. Not only was he a fantastic piano player. He was hilarious. hilarious yes. And it was funny, y'all. They were giving him shots and stuff. Uh -huh. I don't know how he was still sitting up. <laughs> <laughs> 
And is that a normal thing? Like, do they normally do that at the piano bars? Like, people giving them shots and drinks and stuff? Because I wouldn't have been able to have that job. I would have been on the floor. floor. That's what I'm like. How? I like. I gotta believe that some of those had to be water. Something. Because there's just no way he would have still been. Well, no, because he he also had a big giant jug oh, of water. Lord. So he was chasing, or however you call it, because we don't really drink. Uh, <laughs> he was trying to dilute whatever alcohol that was given to him by drinking this giant jug of water. But I mean, he was on point. He like, was did, great. He did not miss a beat. I don't know if people were putting in requests or whatever, but like song after song after song, everybody was singing, clapping. If you get the opportunity, go. Like, yes. we honestly hadn't maybe one at a time really been to any of the people, you know, because we didn't know what to expect. It just right. wasn't our thing anymore. Right. But we decided to try it. You know, that's one of the great things about the ship. A lot of venues, you can yeah. try, you know, whatever. Yeah. And so we did, and it it was packed. It was a lot of fun. It was packed. It was just a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Definitely go. Oh, one of the other activities or venues that they have that was interesting was the Carnival Kitchen. Oh, yeah. So the, they have a Carnival Kitchen, so you can actually take a cooking class uh, with, you know, some of your guests or whatever, which is really interesting because the class, uh, there's glass, win you know, windows, giant windows and a door there that people can look in and see the actual class going on. Fish so bowl. Yes. Fish so it's actually entertainment for us walking by <laughs> to see the class going on. But I was really interested in the things that they were making and it seemed like it was be a really fun class, but we weren't able to attend because it was sold out. So you want to make sure that you look at that before you board and see if they have availability and do it right away, well in, well in advance before you go, because it looked like a lot of fun. But and they we were, were doing a lot of different things. You yeah. could do ice cream, you could do cupcakes, cupcake, you could do sushi. egg cake, you could do sushi. Now, yeah. I did read somewhere, and I thought this was odd, so I don't know the reason behind it, but if you do make something, you can't take it with you. So oh. just FYI, I don't think you know sushi and all the other stuff matters. They have a place for you to actually take your food like a dining table yeah and you can go and eat it but i was just thinking if i made a whole cake i'm not going to eat that but right. if they don't let you take it that's just weird i don't yeah. you know i don't know but just fyi uh, but yeah they have a lot of things and they do have stuff for kids mm -hmm. to do uh kitchen creations there yeah. too so it's very fun carnival kitchen check that out we're gonna try so we can do it one day next time we go <laughs> Um, and then there's also like tons of, you know, there's several pools there on board. So we always, <laughs> we call this, uh, people soup because, uh, the pools I feel like are too small for the amount of people that are actually on board. They had the, the one near the watering hole or summer landing. They had the beach pool, uh, in the middle of the ship, the, the main pool, uh, they had waterworks, and then they also had the serenity, uh, deck pool. And then Havana has a, a little pool. Oh yeah, Havana Havana has a little, yeah they do too. And then Loft eighteen has a pool up there as well. Uh, but it just it just seemed like they were just too small for the amount of people. Yeah, that were and on we the say pools, and it may sound like oh, it sounds like you named five or six pools, Dana. But no, not really because they're little. Yeah, like, they're, they're not very like very little size swimming pools. And again, you got five six thousand people on the ship. If everybody decided to go swimming, swimming the it's same not day, happen. yeah, like on sea days, I mean, it was just like really 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 packed. Now we did manage to be able to go to the surrounding pool and swim up there or wait around or whatever in the pool up, yeah in the pool up there while we were in um, one of the ports I can't remember which port it was uh, and that was fun but the water was freezing I mean it was absolutely so I think some of this is done on purpose so I think really a lot of cruise ships because Carnival's not the only cruise ship not really have enough pools for the people who are on it yeah I think they really most people probably just want to sit out True. around the pool or put their feet in the pool so That's most true. people except for kids and then me really aren't Are trying, trying to, to get swim. in it yeah. you know um so you know it was people's suit but i mean it, we've seen worse i'll tell you that and then like you said with the serenity because it was a port day there weren't that many people you know people get off the ship true and so that's a good time to go and try to go swimming um yeah we have the pool to ourselves people so yeah Basically. i mean there was times i think in that pool maybe it was but it was just, it was people. really cold that water was really cold. Was cold but i mean it was also hot outside so it was kind of like eh, you know yeah it but warmed up fine like i was fine after you know yeah you just got to get used to it or whatever but what's interesting too is when you're there at the serenity pool you can see up at loft 18 and see the pool that they have there 19. oh loft 19 uh -huh. oh sorry loft 19 uh you can see the pool that's up there when you're in the serenity deck 
So let me tell you, that is basically an aquarium of people. Okay, an aquarium <laughs> of butts. <laughs> an aquarium of butts. I mean, that's all it is. I don't that's know. Funny. Instead of fish, it's like butts swimming around. I just don't know how you. Uh, to me, I would not want to go up there and go swimming personally. I don't know if the people up there realize, really know. But for people who are so, in, if you're in the Serenity deck, when you look up on the 19th of the deck right above, there's a. I say pool, but like it is not. It it can't be three. It's for three feet. Yeah, exactly. People like they're on their knees and yeah, on their so, just sitting right. on their butt in yeah. the pool. So I don't know exactly what it is because you have to pay or be part of uh, be one of the sweet guests to actually use this area. Right. I don't know if people are aware though. All we see when y'all are in there is your like legs and your butt when you. That's we, it. And it's just so funny to look up and just see because people will lean up against the glass and so just like it was funny it was funny it really like, was funny i don't i don't know the purpose of that like i i we've seen pools before where people want to have one side that's see-through and stuff but i think in this case it didn't work out yeah we did like the serenity deck though we did like the area there was tons of loungers out there they even had beds out there uh as far as loungers go there wasn't much shade out there uh, but they did have a lot of a lot of uh, it, places to sit. The chairs around the funnel, I think, up there had some shade. Yeah, but that's we true. We could utilize all of them because. Because what? The bees. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they had. So we were sitting on one of the um, one of the lounges around there, and all of a sudden we heard some people not really running, but they were kind of kind of. <laughs> They were coming from the front side of, of the uh, Serenity deck. And they were like, there are bees. Be careful. Don't go over there. There's bees over there. And then there was a giant swarm of bees. All of a sudden, they just decided they wanted to go cruising with us and was hanging out. So you might so, want to be careful. Yeah, maintenance, I think, was trying to take care of. But yeah, it was so were, funny because you see all these people and they're coming over and they're like, be careful. Don't go over there. All the bees. So many people talk about these bees. And so I was like, eh. So just be careful about that. Um, and then um, up on the jogging track, uh, I did like the fact that they had those little cocoon like little uh, pods that you could sit in and, and lounge out there and watch people walk by. Um, the ropes course, I did the ropes course. I can say that I completed it, but if you saw the video, you will see that I was absolutely terrified. Come on, boo, you can do it. Yes, you can. <laughs> you can do it! You're not going to fall! <laughs> it's a lot higher than you think it is. Um, the zip line goes over the water. And I chose not to. I tried. I tried. I tried to muster up all the courage to try and do that. And I just couldn't. I just couldn't. The great part about the ropes course is there's an easy side and a hard side. So there was this little girl that was trying to help. <laughs> cheer me on and tell coach me and tell me what I'm supposed to do she on the road course. Job. She did a great job. She she hey she gave me confidence. You got it. Just put your feet like this. Sideways swim is not more balance You were down there cheering me on too, but the little girl was up there with me and was telling me where to step and everything like that to get through the course uh safely. So I'm glad that I did that. Uh, and I will say the people who are standing on the ground, don't be picking on those people who are up there. It's easy to talk crap when you're standing on a solid foundation. Did he chicken out? Let's see if he makes it through this. He chicken, hey man up. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a very good point. Uh, but one of the highlights, too, of, of Conroe Mardi Gras, the only ship that actually has this, is they have a roller coaster. Uh, so, Bolt. Uh, I rode Bolt. I thought it was a really, really fun ride. It's extremely fast. Uh, or faster than you think it actually really is. And it can go faster than even you went. Yes. Yeah. So first, so first off, when you when you get ready to go on Bolt, you have to make a reservation. Uh, it's fifteen dollars a person to go ride Bolt. They have a uh, test seat there on the uh, deck b below it, where you actually sit on it. You know, test the, the seat belt, make sure it fits. Uh, and then they also have a weight check uh, scale there too. So there is a weight limit. I don't remember exactly what the weight limit is. It's I like think it's 300, 300 pounds, pounds, something like that. Uh, and don't worry, the weight check is, doesn't tell you the pounds. All it does is it gives you a green light or a red light to tell you whether you're good or you're not good uh, to ride the ride. So the, the weight check uh, machine where the test, um, 
where the test seat was actually wasn't working. Um, so I was like, I know I'm going to pass the test anyways. It doesn't really matter. So I went up there. They do check you when you do get ready to get on the ride anyway. So it does work up there. Um, and then you get in, they strap you in and then, uh, they tell you, you know, you've got a little throttle there. And then there's also a booster button, turbo boost button. Now it has a, um, uh, I'm not really sure what you would call it, but basically a boost takeoff. So as soon as it takes off, it throws you out there. And the lady told me, she said, you just push the button to get some boost. You can hold it down. And I think it gives you like maybe 10 seconds of boost. You don't need to use that boost button. Okay. Let me tell you that right now. I never used it. <laughs> I pulled the throttle to adjust the speed of where y'all was going to go a little bit faster, but it goes fast enough that you don't need to use that boost. Uh, it goes around twice, uh, and I think it lasts like maybe three minutes or something like that. Three seconds? <laughs> it's, it's, it's really short. It really is short. Maybe all together three minutes for both laps. Yeah, for okay. both laps. That's what I'm saying. It's like three minutes, okay. but um, it goes so fast. It really, really does, but it's, it's tons of fun. It's a great way to see the tire ship and see what's around you um and just just a lot of fun it's it's not a traditional roller coaster and how you're thinking like you know loops or anything like that it's just a couple of hills uh and it's a two-person seat ride so the person in front of you controls the speed and then the person behind you just kind of holds on they take your picture up there so it's a good thing to have uh a, a memory of and stuff like that and i i screamed my head off the whole time oh, I was yes, up you there. Did. yeah yes you did one thing i will say is they will if weather is bad or for different reasons oh, yeah, they shut will it down. shut that ride down yeah so i have heard some people upset that they didn't get an opportunity to ride that's it. a good point so uh just be wary that there is a potential that you may and it's a very popular attraction so i would say again if it's something that you want to try make your reservation before you go or at least on the first day that you're there go ahead and find a day that you want to go and and, and make that reservation i went once but i wish i had done it actually again and it's 15 dollars, and yes. i think the reason is i think some people would probably or some kids would want to step here and just ride it all oh day. yeah of course and i don't think carnival wants people doing that so no. i think that because honestly the price i feel like is it's pretty high given what it is but it I is that's to deter people from you know well i mean think about maintenance and stuff i mean if somebody was sitting there riding it all day long i mean that's a lot of yeah, wear and tear on that ride all the time yeah it's like not weird hours so yeah it's just it really does yeah